Hello, and welcome to the CCNA Routing and Switching course offered by Simply Learn. The previous lesson focused on VLANs and inter VLAN routing. This lesson will deal with spanning tree and ether channel. Let us begin with the objectives of this lesson in the next slide. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the various aspects of CST protocol, including root bridge election and processing. Differentiate between 802.1D and PVST. Differentiate between 802.1D and RSTP. List the operations of spanning tree commands. Explain the advantages of Ether Channel. Configure Ether Channel. Let us discuss the underlying reason for spanning tree, redundancy. Network availability is important for the users to access it. Redundancy is used to keep the network operational. There are different types of redundancy. The first type is redundant links. This means there is more than one connection between devices, such as Ether Channel. Redundancy is also provided by redundant paths. This is when there is more than one way to reach a device. A device can have more than one interface through which it can receive packets from another device. There is also redundancy in the form of redundant devices. Here, more than one device can perform a function. For example, two Cisco firewalls can be configured for failover, meaning if one of them fails, the other immediately takes over. Therefore, redundancy is good, but it can have unintended side effects. Let us discuss spanning tree protocol in the following slide. Redundancy can lead to three problems that spanning tree protocol, STP, can solve in the switching domain, namely broadcast storms, duplicate frames, and MAC table instability. This is because loops form when there are redundant links and redundant paths. Spanning tree is enabled by default for all virtual local area networks, VLANs. Always enable STP on all switches in the layer 2 domain. If STP is disabled, Bridging loops are not detected and prevented. Let us move on to the next topic, switching problems. The MAC address table is filled. S1 receives a frame from S3. S3 has received this frame from S2, so the MAC address in the frame is that of S2. This information is added to MAC address table. The entry says that a frame with a destination address of MAC A1 should be sent to interface F04. However, the first entry tells the switch to send any frames with destination address MAC A1 out interface F05. We cannot have the frame sent out to different interfaces. Let us continue our discussion on switching problems in the next slide.